At first glance, there is something deceptively ordinary about this scene. It could be a Saturday afternoon on any main street in any small town. There's even a faintly festive feel about it. It is almost Christmas after all. But look closer. The shops are empty. Many of the buildings still here, charred, others completely gone. This is the blackened footprint of Lac Megantic's red zone, where a blazing train tore through the city's downtown a year and a half ago, killing 47 people. Until now, no one has been allowed in here. This is the first and only pilgrimage for a hollowed community that in many ways is still searching for its core. Under the snow, just beyond this fence, stood the most popular gathering place in Lac Megantic, the Music Café, now a snowy field, a barren gravesite. 30 of the 47 people who died that night in July died here. And their ghosts haven't left. Yannick Gagné owned the Music Café. He remembers that night like it was yesterday. A few hours before, it was a perfect night. Uh, very hot outside and uh, because it was very hot outside it was very hot inside too. Karine Blanchette worked as a waitress there. I can't remember the happiness, too much happiness. It was the perfect day. Uh, everyone are very smiley, uh, very good uh, and Everyone told us, ah, oh, we feel good here. Christian Lafontaine was there too, celebrating a birthday with his family. Je suis arrivé au Musée Café, euh, il, il était dans les coins de 11h, 11h, 11h15. On avait fait du travail supplémentaire, on arrivait d'une fête, fête de ma soeur Josée. Euh, et puis, on était sur le, de, notre départ, il était dans les coins d'une heure, une heure quinze avec ma, ma conjointe, ma, ma femme, et j'ai senti une première vibration. It was a hot Friday night. The place was packed. The music was playing, drinks were flowing, and death was approaching. About 10 kilometers away, a train carrying 72 tankers of crude oil had come unhinged and was slowly, uncontrollably rumbling towards Lac Megantic gathering speed up to 100 kilometers an hour as it drew near. The cafe started to vibrate violently, but there was barely time to react before the tankers slammed to a stop, erupting into balls of fire. Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! The bar was completely engulfed. Christian grabbed his wife and started running. On a couru, puis euh, euh, derrière moi, c'était une fraction, des fractions de secondes, c'était des secondes. Il a, je ne sais pas comment, je ne sais pas s'il est sorti quelqu'un. On a sorti probablement les derniers, dans les derniers. Fait que moi, moi, la, moi la seule chose que je pensais à, moment, à ce moment-là, c'est mes enfants. C'est mes enfants, je ne pouvais pas, ça va être, je, je, je les ai eus sur le très tard. Je voyais pas mes enfants orphelins. C'était la seule chose que je voyais, c'est mes enfants. His children didn't lose their parents, but Christian's brother Gaetan, two sister-in-laws, and a colleague would not make it out alive. Yannick had just gotten home when the explosion happened. He saw it all through his bedroom window. We saw the explosion and a knife felt the, the heat coming to the window. I received the first call, one of my staff screaming. She was running outside and saying that it was like hell. Everything's on fire. The music cafe didn't exist anymore. Karine finished her shift early that night, but went back to meet up with friends at the bar. She couldn't find parking and left just minutes before Music Café went up in flames. She can't forget what she saw when she looked back. 
it was just a nightmare or um, you know the, the movie, uh, the blockbuster of uh, <laughs> the end of the world. It was like that. Um, people running everywhere, the car are, uh, are everywhere on the road and they try to leave but turn around and it was just unbelievable. Eh bien, il y avait du monde au Music Café, Karine. Et Karine, c'est tout le centre-ville. Il n'y a, a, a plus de centre-ville. Karine's friend fond. Adrien shot this video and captured the moment Karine called him. Non, 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 Karine, tu te rapproches pas. Sérieusement, là. In that inferno were her friends and regular customers who over the years had become like family. I can't watch it. I try. Uh, many times because I think I have to see that again to heal but uh, at this moment it's um, it's too earlier I think um, step by step <laughs> step by step you hear that a lot here that deadly night is a chapter that is difficult to close and impossible to forget but the slow, often painful process of rebuilding has begun. It wasn't Yannick's plan last spring to start all over again, but people in town begged him to rebuild the cafe and in a way rebuild Lac Megantic's future. They needed it to heal, they told him, and Yannick needed to douse the demons of guilt, those voices that kept telling him somehow it was all his fault. Every time I, I go out, I... I see someone who's losing someone in my place and his eyes looking at me and I know that he's thinking, oh, Yannick, I'm just careful. I, I know it's normal, but it puts a lot of pressure. I know, but I have to live with some, someone's thinking, uh, it's, the fault is my place. Karin had moved away to get some distance, but Yannick is a dear friend. She didn't want to abandon him or the community. She's taken up a new position at the bar as its hostess. The music cafe was uh, a spirit in downtown. So for the community, Yannick had to be strong to rebuild just for the community or for the family still alive. Moving forward for Lac Megantic, it has been a difficult and halting process. Some businesses have rebuilt, but not all. The cost is staggering, and compensation from the country, the province, the city itself, has been mired in delays and red tape. No one knows that more than Yannick. It took months for the insurance money to come in to simply get started. The new cafe in a new location is 10 times more expensive than his last one. By the time it's done, he will be in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Yannick wanted to quit almost every day. We have all this problem. It's impossible. It's unbelievable. We never, never think it's possible. But this is a collective push forward. The community has rallied around Yannick. Wow. Uniforms for the new staff were donated. A sound system worth about $100,000 was offered at half the price. And the installation of it worth $5,000, done for free. Even people from the bank he owes money to are helping get the place ready. It's incredible what he had to face uh, during this uh, 15 months. It's, uh, it's, he's done very good. But how to wake up from a waking nightmare? For Yannick especially, Music Café's rebirth is already seared in so many memories. Some things that uh, we uh, recuper recuperate from uh, Music Café, piece, uh, piece of the floor. Under the deck of his house, he stores the little he was able to recover from his original bar. Still Beer kegs, a money box with bills that still smells like oil. Very dirty, but... And remarkably, a horseshoe. The luck to be alive with my family. It's the only thing. 
when we come back, the emotional toll of rebuilding. Everything passed me in the, in the head. Uh, suicide, everything. A symbol of death and renewal. It's been a long and painful journey to rebuild Music Cafe and find a way to honor all those who died there. Inside, there are memorials as well, a granite plaque engraved with an angel rising above flames. Like a book of condolences, there are signatures, including the Prime Minister's, and etched on the speakers, the names of the victims who will always be part of this place, who will always be part of its history. The new cafe is not far from the old one and not far from the train tracks again, trains that are already carrying hazardous material through here. Life keeps moving on, but for Yannick, there are still so many flashbacks. I hope to uh, never, never live something like that, uh, or, or live th this kind of feeling uh, ever. Everything passed me in the, in the head, uh, suicide, everything. The blackness recedes, then comes back. I can wait uh, 10 times in one hour. His dreams, full of fire, jolt him awake. Nightmares like uh, you're inside, you're, uh, you can see uh, everyone and feel or imagine what's happened and how they try to escape or what they saw. Karin had second thoughts about coming back to work here. The sound of the train, the smell of gasoline, they're all triggers that ignite a fury. When I see a train, I have uh, angry. Yes, I still have angry about this tragedy. I try to, to make peace with this, but it's difficult again for me. I hope one day I will be in peace with all of that, but at this moment, I'm not. And then there's coping by trying so hard not to dwell. Christian has thrown himself into the family excavation business with a vengeance. The music cafe, all of people uh, inside the, that day and uh, my car. He was part of the cleanup team the day after the tragedy. He refuses to look back, refuses to not be strong. Me and my wife, we run, we run. He we chose pass. to mark his memory this way, and his tattoo, a raw reminder of the horror of that night. I'm running for my life, and I'm a survivor of that, that tragedy. Christian says he doesn't want to run anymore. He wants the music cafe to reopen. He wants to race to the future it represents. On va tous mourir. On ne sait pas quand. C'est ça. C'est ça qu'il faut se dire. Puis le, le temps qu'on est en vie, il faut en profiter. Il faut faire quelque chose. Sinon, tu n'es là pour rien. Regardez en avant. C'est là. Derrière, on ne peut pas rien faire. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire avant? Qu'est-ce que je vais faire demain? Pour que ça soit mieux. But this has been, still is, a tentative journey. On this night, a private party before Music Cafe opens to the general public. Christian is here with his wife and friends. Here are two other people who escaped that night. Some who lost friends and family. There's an instant connection in this room, an unspoken understanding. It's a mix uh, of emotion because they remember me, the tragedy, but they, rem they remember me that, okay, we're still alive, so we have to celebrate life. Yes, that's the feeling that I have, that I have at this moment. But Yannick isn't sure how much comfort this will all bring. He finds it hard to relax. He wants it all to go so well. But this, 
This is all about rising from the ashes, and he simply can't forget the lost lives they represent. But he's trying so hard to move on. With my eyes, I can see right now six or seven family that lost someone there. And tonight they're here and they are happy. Some things, uh, some things great, some things that uh, helped me to pass the, 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 the tragedy. Music Café, its new opening is, after all, as much a story about moving forward as it is about finding a way to live with a future that will never be free of its past. For The National, I'm Joanna Brumeliotis.